Hi, Yogi, it's Bri. Welcome to Happy Hamstrings. In this practice, we'll be opening our hamstrings. So if you know you're a bit tighter and you need blocks, or I will be using two straps at the end of the practice. If you only have one, that's okay. But um, after I show you what I'm doing, you'll probably want to. Let's get started. Let's get started on our backs. Go ahead and lie down. Once you get there, hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a loving squeeze and take a deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. Before we begin, stretch your legs straight out in front of you. Let your feet drop open. Close your eyes. We're actually gonna stop to start. We'll take Shavasana before we even practice. But a more active Shavasana. So using this place or this time on your back to really focus on your Ujjayi breath. Inhaling deeply through your nose and out through your nose. Trying to get the inhalations and the exhalations equal. Take a couple of rounds here, breathing some love and some space into those hamstrings. Let's take one more clearing breath together. Inhale through your nose. Sigh it out. And then open your eyes. Draw your right knee into your chest. Give it a big squeeze, pulling that right knee all the way up as high as you can. Then use your right peace sign fingers to grab your right big toe. And if possible, extend your right leg to straight. If that isn't possible, then you'll take that strap that you hopefully have. And if you don't have a strap, then you can always use a towel or any sort of fabric to hoist it around the arch of your foot. Make sure that your left leg is also engaged. So go ahead and flex your left foot. Push your left heel firmly down into the mat. And think about firming the inner thighs towards one another as you flex your right foot and pull that right shin in towards your chest. Sukta Padangustasana, one of my favorite ways to open my hamstrings in the beginning of a practice. Sometimes I even do this in bed, before bed, in the morning. It's a really accessible pose. Each inhalation, think about bringing that right shin just a bit closer towards you. Each exhalation, firm the inner thighs into one another, ensuring that you get that stretch right into the belly of the hamstring. Inhale and exhale, bend your right knee. Try to get that perfect L shape so that your right knee is right above your right hip and then open your right knee out towards the right. Releasing any tension, any stress that might have been accumulated in the inner groins and the adductors. And then inhale, come on back to center and just take it into a nice supine twist. Bringing your right knee over towards the left Shifting all the way onto that left hip and opening your right arm towards the right. Finding a bit of space in that right side body and even in the muscles that line the spine, those thick erector and QL muscles. Inhale, come on back to center. All you're gonna do is switch sides. Send your right leg forward, pull your left knee into your chest. As you inhale, really pull that left knee in. This actually has some really great digestion benefits. Then flex your right foot, roll the inner right thigh down as you press that right heel down. Grab your left big toe with the peace sign fingers or use whatever prop you might have gotten if you can't reach that left big toe. You could also just take your hands around that left calf if that's more accessible for you. Inhale. And as you exhale, pull your left shin towards you. 
Upon that next inhalation, find a little bit more pull. And then exhale, squeeze the inner thighs towards one another. You want to feel that left sit bone still rooting down. The more you press your left sit bone down and pull the shin towards you, the deeper the stretch is actually going to find itself in the hamstring. Also, flexing your left foot will help that stretch rise up into the calf. Inhale. And exhale, release, bending your left knee like that L shape, keeping your right hip on the ground as you open your left knee out towards the left. Doing your best to externally rotate that left femur. So really using that outer left hip to open your left knee out. Inhale fully. Exhale, bring your left knee back to center and take it all the way to the right into the twist. Making sure to shift all the way onto that right hip, lengthening down through your right heel and twisting open, opening your left arm towards the left and gluing the left shoulder blade down. And then inhale, coming on back to center, hugging both knees into your chest. Give yourself a big squeeze and begin to rock and roll vertically up and down along the length of your spine, taking a few rocks, maybe even rocking the legs back into a halasana shape and rocking all the way up and coming into tabletop position. Hands and knees. Hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Make sure your hands are shoulders distance. I like to have my index fingers forward. It's just a great way to open my shoulders, but you can always have your middle fingers forward for more of a traditional stance. Bring your knees together for this variation of cat-cow where we're gonna warm up the hamstrings. First, inhale and exhale round. Push down through your hands, spread the shoulder blades, draw your chin to your chest and your tailbone to the backs of your knees. Then as you inhale, drop the chest, start to look forward, lift the sits bones, and pull your heels to your butt as you point your toes. This action of pulling in will really warm up the hamstrings for all of the stretching we're going to do. Exhale, round. Inhale, pull it in. Back bend. Two more. Exhale, round. Inhale, back bend. Pull the heels in as tight as you can, point the toes. One more, in or exhale, I should say, round, and inhale, back bend, pull your heels in. Inhale, put the, the feet down, come into tabletop position, tuck your toes under, and exhale, lift the knees up, finding downward facing dog. Come high up onto your toes as you inhale. Keep pressing your forearms just forward towards the base of your knuckles. Hug the forearms in as you spread the shoulder blades wide and draw your ribs in. Then begin to pedal out your legs. So one heel down, then the other. Do it a little more rapidly just to find a bit of movement in the practice we started slowly. So just wanting to warm you up a bit more. Pedaling out the legs, rooting the heels firmly to the earth, maybe getting a bit more of that rooting action. A couple more times. Come high up onto the balls of your feet as you inhale. As you exhale, press both heels towards the mat. It's okay if your heels don't quite touch. Just think about pressing the inner thighs back and the outer hips back to find that length in your low back. Inhale fully. And exhale, walk your hands back towards your feet, the back of the mat. Fingertips underneath your shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. You're going to put a bend in your right knee, keeping your left leg straight. You're going to fold over your left leg. So just turning the torso slightly. If you want to take it a little further, you take your right elbow between your legs and grab a hold of your left ankle. Pull up on that ankle to pull your forehead and the crown of the head in. Think about lifting that outer left hip up as you root down through your left heel. Inhale back to that flat back, just switching sides. Straighten your right leg, bend your left knee, and fold down towards your right shin. Again, if you want to grab the ankle and deepen the fold, left elbow between your legs, grab a hold of your ankle, pull up to pull the crown of the head and the forehead down. Lifting your outer right hip up as you root down through your right heel. And then inhale to a flat back. 
straightening both of your legs, lengthening the outer hips back, walk your hands back into downward facing dog. Feeling a lot more open in the hamstrings. My hamstrings are super happy. Hopefully yours are too. Take a deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. Bring your feet together and inhale, reach your right leg up and back. Bend your knee, open your hip. Think about pressing your left heel or rooting it down towards the mat. If your left heel can't get there, put a little bend in your left knee. Press your chest back as you lift your right knee up and think about pressing your outer left hip back towards the back of your mat. Inhale and exhale, knee to nose. Step your right foot forward. Placing your left knee down onto the mat and your hands to your right knee, push yourself up towards your torso being over your pelvis. Now, we're warming up our right hamstring because we're bending our right knee. I want you to focus on doing that even further by pulling the right foot to the back of the mat. We also are going to approach Hanumanasana later on in this sequence and want to make sure that your left hip flexors or both side hip flexors are quite open for that. So think about lengthening the sides of the waist, even the back ribs up, draw the navel in, inhale, and exhale, taking your fingertips down, moving your left knee back, straightening your right leg into Ardha Hanumanasana. Flex your right foot as you inhale, lengthen the spine and your heart forward. Exhale, fold down through center. Keep firming the thighs into one another. Stay here, or you can try to lower your forearms all the way down to the mat as well, getting into a much deeper variation of Ardha Hanuman. And if that's just not possible, staying on your fingertips, or if you can't even reach the ground, then using a block or two underneath your hands is really, really helpful here. And remember, if you're tight in your body, this practice will definitely help you gain a lot more flexibility. And flexibility is something that just takes constant practice, just like strength. Inhale to a flat back, bend back into your right knee and lift your left knee up off the ground. Keeping your fingertips underneath your shoulders, squeeze the inner thighs towards one another. And once again, thinking about pulling your right foot to the back of the mat, press the left heel back, lift the inner left thigh. Inhale and exhale, step your left foot in just slightly, spin the right heel down, straighten your right leg. So you want a little more narrow of a distance than a leg would be between your heels. Inhale to a flat back and exhale, folding down Parsvottanasana. It's really important that you utilize the strength of your quadricep and of your quadricep and the outer right hip to support the straightening of the leg. So think about lifting the right quad up. If you're not quite sure if the right quad is engaged or not, you can actually feel it. If it feels like jello, then likely you need to engage it more, something I've been working on quite a lot lately. Then as you fold down, send your outer right hip back and into the midline. Couple more breaths here. Then inhale to a flat back, plant your palms flat down, step your feet back into plank pose, lower down chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Great job. Bring your feet together. Let's move to the other side. Inhale, reach your left leg up and back. Bend the knee, open the hip. Think about rooting your right heel down, pressing your outer right hip back. And as you push your chest back, lift your left knee up higher, feeling that right hamstring once again. Inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Step your left foot forward. Place your right knee down onto the ground. This should feel really good on the right hip flexors. Take your hands onto your left knee and press your torso up. Think about drawing your navel in to deepen that stretch in the hip flexors. And then we're going to pull that left foot to the back of the mat to find engagement in the left hamstring. As you push the torso back, lengthen both sides of the waist. Take a deep inhalation through your nose. And exhale, bring your fingertips down. Move your right knee back, straighten your left leg as you untuck your right toes. Fingertips underneath your shoulders, inhale to a flat back. 
Exhale, folding in for Ardha Hanumanasana. If this is enough for you, just stay here, focusing on length with each inhalation, sealing in that length with each exhalation, or you can deepen the stretch by lowering the forearms all the way down to the mat. Forehead to your left shin or to the inside of the shin. Couple more breaths. And then inhale, rise up onto your hands, bend into your left knee, fingertips underneath the shoulders, lift your right knee up off the ground. Firm the inner thighs towards one another. Finding a little bit of that adduction will help you lift the pelvic floor up. Press your right heel back, lift the inner right thigh. Inhale. Exhale, step your right foot in just a bit. Spin the right heel down, lining it up heel to heel or hips distance. Inhale to find length. Firm the inner thighs together to square your hips and exhale, folding over your left shin. Once again, thinking about pressing your left shin forward as if you're trying to bend the knee, but then lifting your left kneecap up to straighten the leg and find a bit of that uh, engagement in your left quadricep will really help you protect your hamstring and knee as you work on this flexibility. Couple more breaths. And then inhale to a flat back, plant your palms flat, step back through your vinyasa. I find that when I work on my hamstrings, when I back bend, it's actually a really nice counter action for that hamstring length. Downward facing dog. All right. We'll move a little more rapidly in this next part. Bring your feet together. Inhale, reach your right leg up, but flex a foot, keep your hips squared. Walk your hands towards the back of the mat into standing splits with the hips squared. Grabbing your left ankle with your left hand. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold, pulling that forehead in towards your left shin and maybe reaching your right leg up just a tad bit higher. You can stay here or inhale to a flat back, plant your palms flat down and just take a few light hops off the ground. I wouldn't suggest going all the way up into your handstand, but just finding a bit of that lift to get your heart rate going and warm up your arms. One more hop. Inhale to a flat back, walk back into one legged down dog with your right leg lifted, lift it up a little higher, inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, step your right foot forward. Spin your left heel down, inhale, rise up, Vira Bajrasana one. Lengthen the back ribs up as you inhale, as you exhale, sink deeper, and then open the arms out wide into warrior two. Heel toe your right foot to the left, one step as you bend into that right knee. Flip your right palm, inhale, reverse your warrior, and straighten your right leg. Keeping all the same principles in that straight right leg is Parsvottanasana. Reach your right hand forward and then down to your right shin. Keep pushing the shin forward as the right quad lifts and the outer hip draws back and into the midline. You can stay here or bring your right fingertips down to the outside of the right foot. If neither variation is accessible to you, you can have a block underneath your right hand as you reach your left arm up towards the sky. As you inhale, breathe length. As you exhale, think strength, ribs, navel in. Then looking down, bending into your right knee, reaching your right fingertips forward until they're underneath the shoulder, lifting your left foot up into Ardha Chandrasana. Engaging your outer right hip by drawing it back and into the midline, finding that nice solid balance on your right foot. Take a deep breath in, maybe take your gaze towards the left, inhale, and exhale, left fingertips come down, square your hips off, and fold down into a standing splits. Grabbing your right ankle with your right hand, pulling your forehead in towards the right shin, and lifting your left leg up. Inhale. Exhale, step your left foot back down at the back of the mat. Bring your left knee down and straighten your right leg. Grab a block, 
place it the medium height or maybe the low height just depending on your flexibility and start to slide your left knee back your right heel forward until you're in a supported hanumanasana try to square your hips lengthen the spine up inhale and exhale fold all the way down since there's nothing supporting your the back of your right knee make sure to keep that little bend in the right knee Squeeze the inner thighs towards one another. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale to fold a little bit deeper. And if the fold is just not possible for you, staying upright in this position is perfectly fine. And then inhale, rising back up. I'm going to take a look at what I'm doing here because it could be a little bit confusing. So Vashistasana B is a position that requires balance and strength, but also length in the hamstring that you're taking up into the B position. So there's one way that you can practice it supported with the back knee down. So first you can try it the supported way, just like a supported Vashistasana. Okay, you can keep your left knee down onto the ground, your right hand supports you, bend your right knee into your chest, reach the right leg forward, and then as you start to reach it up, notice how my left foot comes behind me, okay? Then you can come up onto your fingertips to feel a little more length. Maybe even look up, pull the foot towards you. And then release. If you want to take it a bit further into the full Vashistasana B, you come onto the pinky toe edge of your left foot, left hand underneath the shoulder, pull the right foot in. I like to bend my left knee to find some balance reach the right leg up, and then straighten into the left leg. Maybe even take the gaze up towards the sky. Inhale, and exhale, release, and vinyasa. We'll take it to the other side. Great job. Downward facing dog. Last side, and then we'll wrap it up. You're doing a great job. Feet together. Inhale, reach your left leg up and back. Keep your left leg straight, flex your foot, and walk your hands back towards your right leg. I know we just worked this right leg, right? <laughs> Go ahead and fold it down, but keep the hips square, firm the thighs in towards one another. Now inhale to a flat back, plant the palms flat underneath the shoulders, draw the ribs in, and just take a few really light hops, lifting the hips up and over the shoulders. Not really thinking about handstanding here, just thinking more about getting some upper body strength and some blood flowing through the body. One more hop. Walk back into downward facing dog as you inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, knee to nose, step forward. Spin the right heel down, <laughs> inhale, rise up, Virabhadrasana one. Almost forgot where we were there. Think about squaring your hips, rooting back through the outer edge of your right foot. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, open wide into warrior two. Heel toe, your left foot to the right, one step, opening the arms out wide, bending deep into the left knee. Inhale, reverse your warrior, straighten your left leg, still thinking about that left quad engaging as you lean forward and down. Left hand comes down onto the left shin. If it's available to you to bring the fingertips to the ground on the outside of the left leg, do so. Maybe using the block underneath your left hand could be more comfortable as well. Draw your ribs in, open your right shoulder, maybe even take the gaze up. Now inhale, look down towards the ground, bend into your left knee and stand tall on your left leg making sure that your left fingertips are underneath the left shoulder to help with balance flex your right foot and as you inhale open the right shoulder possibly even looking out towards the right inhale fully exhale bringing your right fingertips down squaring your hips so rolling your right inner thigh up towards the sky and finding standing splits grab your left ankle with your left hand Lift your right leg up high as you pull your forehead in towards your left shin. Inhale to a flat back. Step your right foot all the way to the back of the mat. Put your right knee down. Grab a block. Scoot the right knee back a little bit. 
Place the block underneath your left hip as you slide your right knee back and your left heel forward. Okay? So a lot of people ask, how do I do Hanumanasana? I'm not flexible enough. And way back when I first started, I was the same way. And one of my teachers told me, do Hanuman every day. Well, like, like anything, if you do it every day, you practice a lot, your body can create these shapes. So if you feel really tight here, you're not alone. You can stay propped up in this position or forward fold all the way down. And then inhale, rising back up. Prepping yourself for either that supported Vashistasana B or the full variation. So the supported variation, the right knee comes down, the right foot moves out to the right. You balance yourself with your right hand underneath your right shoulder. Grab your right big toe with the peace sign, or left big toe with the peace sign fingers, and then reach that left leg up, okay? The more you can lean back, the deeper the pose is going to be. And then for the full position, you come into that Vashistasana B on the pinky toe edge of your right foot. Pull your left knee in. Grab the left big toe. Reach up. Notice how I bend my right knee first to reach the leg up, and then I can push that right leg to straight. Inhale. And exhale, releasing down through your vinyasa. Sitting back onto your shins. Great job. <laughs> you worked so hard. Now we're really going to reap the benefits of all of our work. I'm going to use those two straps. First, I'll show you how to do this with just one strap, and then I'll show you the benefits of two. So looping up your strap here, just so that it's a circle, a nice tight one, and you're going to have to do a little bit of measuring, okay? You're going to lay back, make sure if you have another strap that it's nearby, you're going to lay back onto your back, loop the strap first around the arch of your right foot, then bringing the strap all the way down onto your hip flexor of the left leg, and you have to get it super tight. Having technical difficulties with my strap, okay? Make sure that it's tight enough to create tension between the arch of your right foot and the left leg. Great. So what this is doing here is as you come into the same pose that we did in the beginning, it's helping you square your hips and creating a bit of space between your left hip flexors and your left femur bone, which if you've ever experienced any clicking in your hips, this is a really great fix, okay? Like so. Now, you can stay here and maybe use a towel if you can't reach your left big toe, or you could grab your left big toe and pull the foot in, and you'll immediately feel what in physiotherapy uh, we call a distraction. It creates space in typically tight areas. Now, I'm still adjusting my strap, so I'm sure you are too. There we go. So make sure it's not cutting off any circulation, but it's tight enough that you do feel like the strap is pulling and creating space. If you have another strap, you're going to do the same thing. Create that loop. And you're going to place this strap behind your head as well as on the arch of your lifted leg foot. Okay. I'll probably have to adjust it a bit. So your head ends up being a cradle for your hamstrings, so you actually don't even have to do anything. You don't have to hold on to the hamstring or anything. So I like to put it kind of like um, a flower crown, so make sure if you know what a flower crown is, make sure it's above your ears on your head, okay, and then on the arch of the foot as well. And now I've just created a place for me to just take a supported vinyasa, or supported shavasana. 
where my left hamstring is opening, my left hip flexors are being, or I'm creating space around them, and I don't even need to use any strength in my body. Now, of course, you can try both of these things with just one strap, but with two straps, you can do both of them at the same time. Take a deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. And we're just going to take it to the other side. So first, keeping the strap behind you, just drop it from your foot. You're going to take your left foot into the strap, placing it on the arch, and then reaching your right leg up. Super easy. Grab the strap that is behind your head and place it on the arch of your right foot. And just allow the straps to do their work. Open the arms out wide. Of course, if you only have one strap, you can do this thing one at a time, right? Start with maybe the strap on the hip flexor using your hands to pull in. And then once you've created that space in the hip flexors, then you can use a strap on your head to just hang out and pull the leg back. Deep breaths here. Let's take a couple of clearing breaths together. Deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly begin to remove the straps out of the way. Keep that calm, relaxed mind and body. Let your feet drop open. Let your hands rest to the sides of the mat. Close your eyes. And take Shavasana for as long as it serves you. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Namaste.